Hi everybody, this is Miss Sarah with the Fayetteville Public Library and this is the Reading Buddy Book Club for ages four to seven. Do you have your reading buddy? I hope you do. If you don't have the one you got from the library, go get another buddy and you guys can listen to a story. Hey, I've got my reading buddy. It might look like the one you got from the library. I named my reading buddy Scout. Hi, Scout. <laughs> Are you ready for a story? I think Scout's ready. I'm going to put Scout right here. See if I can get her to sit up. There we go. I have a stool just for her so she can listen to this book. Hey, the book we're going to read today is called Fox and Crow Are Not Friends. And this is by Melissa Wiley. Chapter One, A Nice Bit of Cheese. Fox and Crow did not like each other one bit. You might have heard about their very first fight. It was over a piece of cheese. Crow found it first. She flew to a tree to eat it. Fox spotted the big hunk of cheese. He loved a nice bit of cheese. Crow was about to gulp it down, so Fox had to act fast. Hello, Crow, he called. How are you on this fine day? Crow did not answer. Fox tried again. How fine you look up in that tree. Your feathers shine in the sun. You make the sky look more blue. Oh, what a lovely bird you are. Crow was pleased. She gave her wings a proud flap. Still, she did not answer. Fox tried again. I bet your song is as fine as your feathers. I would love to hear you sing. Well, Crow could not resist. She opened her beak and sang, Caw! 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 What happened when she opened her mouth? The cheese tumbled down. It fell right into Fox's mouth. He gobbled it up lickety-split. He licked his lips and laughed. Crow glared at Fox. You had better watch out, Fox, she said. You may be a sly fox, but crows are very smart. You took my cheese. I will get even with you. You don't scare me, Crow, said Fox. Crow dived at Fox, but Fox ran into the bushes. And from that day on, Fox and Crow were enemies. Chapter two, a good smell is hard to find. Crow had a plan. The plan needed three things. A piece of string, a piece of cheese, and a good smell. Hmm, what do you think her plan is? The string was easy to find. Do you see where she found it? She, she took the clothesline from someone who was drying their clothes in the sun. Crow tied one end to a tree and she looped the other end and placed it on the ground. The cheese was harder to find. Crow put the cheese inside a loop of string. She hid the cheese under leaves. Now, all she needed was a good smell. But that was the hardest part. How do you carry a good smell? Can you think of a good smell right now? Hmm, maybe if your parent was baking bread in the oven, that would be a good smell. 
or maybe sometimes right before dinner is ready. That makes a really good smell in your house. She saw some fish frying in a pan over a fire, but that was not a smell she could carry. She saw a skunk spraying her perfume. Crow could carry that smell, but she didn't want to, so she flew away fast. I guess if you carry that smell, you have to carry the whole skunk. Then Crow found a very good smell. She spied three bowls of stew. The smell of stew would be perfect for Crow's plan. But how does a crow carry a bowl? The only way to carry stew, thought Crow, is to wear it. The stew in the big bowl was too hot. The stew in the middle bowl was too cold. The stew in the little bowl was just right. Crow could wear that stew, so she poured it over her head and it ran down all of her feathers. Does this remind you of another story where the big bowl was too hot the medium bowl was too cold, and the little bowl was just right. Crow flew past Fox's den. The good smell flew with her. Fox sniffed. The smell made his mouth water. Fox came out of his den. Crow flew from tree to tree, leading him along. Fox did not see her. He was following the good smell. Crow led Fox to the cheese in the hidden loop of string. When Fox saw cheese instead of stew, he was surprised. But Fox liked cheese even better than he liked stew. He could not wait to gobble it up. Crow pulled on the string. The loop closed tight around Fox's paw. He was trapped. Crow flew down and Fox flew up. Fox yelled. Aah! Crow laughed and laughed. Fox dropped the cheese right into Crow's open beak. Delicious! She said, thank you, Fox, for the tasty snack. I do love a bit of cheese. Fox shook his paw in the air. I'll get you, Crow, he shouted. No one out, Fox is a fox. That was the second fight. And the third fight was even worse. Chapter three. Revenge is a dish best served with cheese. Fox fumed. He did not like flying up in the air. He did not like losing. He did not like Crow. He plotted a way to get even with her. For his plan, he needed three things. A scarecrow a piece of cheese, and a birdcage. <laughs> what do you think he's going to do? Step one was easy. The scarecrow was in the cornfield. Step two was a little harder. He did not know where Crow kept finding all this cheese. He looked in the burrows, in the nests, in the dens. Finally, he found a nice piece of cheese in a cabin. <laughs> uh, Mother Bear does not look very happy. Fox found some wood and built a cage. Fox's plan was perfect. He went to the cornfield and hid the birdcage in a haystack. 
He hid himself in the scarecrow's clothes and he held out the cheese and waited. <laughs> this is a funny idea. Can you imagine yourself in a field? And let's just pretend you're a scarecrow and there's a little piece of cheese on this hand, but you have to be perfectly still. <laughs> that would be hard to do. <laughs> Let's see how it turns out for Fox. Soon along came Crow. She spotted the cheese in the scarecrow's hand. Crow landed on the scarecrow's hand just as she took the cheese. In her beak, the scarecrow's hand closed on her leg. Oh no. I've got you now, Crow. I told you I'd get even with you, cried Fox. Crow could not get away. Fox shoved Crow into the birdcage and locked it tight. He grabbed the cheese from the crow's beak. He was about to gobble it up when a net fell over both Fox and Crow. Help, cried Fox. Help, yelled Crow. Who do you think threw the net? I've got you now, Fox and Crow, said Mama Bear. That'll teach you not to steal my cheese. Fox and Crow. They looked at each other. <laughs> they were both sly. They were both smart, but they were not as sly or smart as Mama Bear. Fox and Crow are still enemies, but now they do not fight each other. They have to work together making cheese for Mama Bear. <laughs> the end. That was Fox and Crow are not friends. Hey, did you like that book? I thought it was really good. There are a lot of fables and folklore around Fox and Crow. So if you think that kind of story is good, the library has a lot more that you can check out. I hope you come in and visit and you can check out Fox and Crow. While you're watching, I want to recommend an easy reader series to you. This is one of my favorite series, and it could be one that your caregiver read when they were younger, and it is called Amelia Bedelia. There's lots of Amelia Bedelia books. This is actually the first one, and then they kind of did a reprint, redrawing of it, and this is what the newer ones look like. But Amelia Bedelia is brought to someone's house to help them. She's like a housekeeper. And Amelia Bedelia takes things literally. And when you say the word literally, that means you do exactly what someone says. So in one of the examples from this book, um, the woman who owns the house asks Amelia Bedelia to change the towels in the bathroom. Hmm. What do you think someone means when they say, change the towels in the bathroom? Well, what I mean is, please go wash the towels and make sure that there are clean ones in the bathroom. What does Amelia Bedelia do? She gets her scissors out and she changes the towels in the bathroom. She makes them different than they were before. So Amelia Bedelia is always doing things like that. Um, in fact, one of my favorite scenes, she dresses a turkey. So instead of putting dressing, which is something you eat uh, with or in a turkey, she actually puts clothes on the turkey. It's super funny. So I think the next time you're in the library, you should check out Amelia Bedelia. One more thing to tell you about while you're watching, make sure you've registered for Summer Reading Club, which I bet all of you have, because you are logging the minutes that you spend reading. And if you read 1,000 minutes, you get to pick a free book 
from the library and you also get a prize out of our treasure box. So make sure you're getting your reading in every day. And hey, guess what? You can count this. However long this video was, about 20 minutes, you can count it for your reading. Yay! One more thing I wanna tell you about the next time you come in, make sure you pick up an Animal Tales bingo sheet. Parents, we just have these at the grade school and preschool desk and your kids can complete a bingo and they can get a prize out of our treasure box anytime during the summer. Just complete one bingo and you get a prize. After you complete one, if you complete the whole board, you can get another prize. Super cool. We're all about letting kids pick from our treasure box. So some of the ones on here, read a story about animals who are friends. Well, we kind of just did that. They were enemies first, but then they were friends. Um, let's see. Read a book to a stuffed animal or a pet. Well, we just did that. Um, draw or color a picture of your favorite animal. So lots of fun animal themed activities that you guys can do over the summer. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this first episode of the Reading Buddy Book Club. Scout and I both say a happy hello and a thanks for watching. Make sure you're reading all summer long and next time you're in the library, stop by and say hi to Miss Sarah. I'll see you soon. Bye.